what a great subject to draw. And yet how often when we see scenes like this, do we find ourselves thinking, oh yes, but I can't draw that water. Water's too hard to draw. In this video, I want to challenge that idea and say that it's not that water is too hard. It's just that we go about it the wrong way. We think the wrong way. We think of water as if it were any other object, a brick, a suitcase, an apple, and we want to draw lines to enclose it. And yet water is so often not defined in this way. Its edges, particularly in something such as a waterfall, are often very fluid. If you excuse the pun. There's often movement, even if the water is still, if there's a wind rippling the surface, there's movement and there's light and there's possibly reflections bouncing off it. The challenge is not to be thinking of the water, but to be looking at the effect that we need to capture in our lines. And so something I often see in drawings of waterfalls is basically something that looks like this. What we're drawing is the fact that we know that the water is falling. It's as if we want to draw the falling with our pen. But of course we can't draw falling. We just end up with a lot of straight lines. Or if it's somewhere such as down here, we might end up with something that looks more like this. I've often mentioned how Perhaps when subjects seem a bit overwhelmingly complex to draw, we can resort to symbols, whether it's grass or leaves or whatever. And I think this has become a symbol for waterfalls, for falling water. Instead, we have to say, what's the effect that we want to capture? And by effect, I mean, what are we actually seeing that we want to draw? Because we're certainly not seeing a whole lot of straight lines coming down together like that. And if we take a small section, say up here, what we actually see is something that's a lot more like this. What I'm trying to do is to capture the values that we have here in the shapes that the values are in. Because what these are doing is reflecting the underlying form that the water for just this second when it was captured by the camera was revealing. And if I look, I can see that some sections are completely white. They're the lightest value that we could have in this whole scene. Other sections of the water are of a darker but still generally lighter value than most of the values in this scene, most of the lights and darks that we can see. In effect, in most cases, we really see the water not by the lines to represent somehow the falling, but by the shadows around the lines, by the spaces of darkness that's next to the water. show us not just the water, but also what's happening underneath the water. If you like, this is a perfect example of drawing through negative space. We're not drawing the object, we're actually drawing what's around the object, which in this case is mostly just dark hatching. And by stopping that surrounding space in the right places, and by adjusting the values with our cross hatching, the water appears almost by magic in the space that's left. So let me demonstrate this now as I draw out this scene. I decide to start at the top of the waterfall and to move down because I want to start with the very lightest, finest marks and then increase them as the waterfall cascades closer and closer to me. So I think that's going to work best to do it this way. And I just want to establish the very uppermost marks because in a sense, because I want these to be my, my kind of finest, most delicate part of the waterfall, 
that will then inform me as to how heavy I need to get as I move down the waterfall. I decide to put these two small children at the top of the falls. I don't see these as a particularly strong point of my drawing, but I do think they add a certain charm and more importantly, a certain scale to the waterfall. And I think that's um, a very helpful thing in a scene if we can if we can manage it. I haven't quite decided how much of these overhanging branches and foliage I'm, I'm going to draw and the distant um, trees or shrubs that are on the far side of the waterfall. But I decide to leave those till later. But I do certainly want to put the, these these leaves that are quite close up, that are significantly closer than any of the other leaves, branches that we see, because I think they're a really visually interesting point and they just help create a little more depth of plane in that upper section by having something quite close to us right in front of the things that are furthest away. And so I, I do a very light gestural representation of those far trees thinking, well, I can always come back to it later if it looks a bit insubstantial for how I draw the rest of this. Now, what I need to focus on are these horizontal bands of rock that step down virtually as steps, that the water is, is cascading down. These actually are called uh, the Lura Cascades. So the cascading effect is their, is their feature. And what I need to do is to define the water, not by drawing the water, but by drawing the shadows around the water. Now we have shadows that are very black where there's no water actually falling over it. And then we also have shadows that are gray, either because shade's being cast on that area or because the water is very thin. And so it's not reading to us as white the way it does where it's thicker, where it's projecting further from the rock face. However, I decide to pretty much keep all the water white just to, to give a nicer effect of this bright sunlit scene. And I, I didn't want to risk creating confusion with my lines, with lines for, for shade, and then the lines to represent the, the darker values of the spaces around the water. So it is, a, it is a bit of a focus to keep all these steps, if you like, thin enough. Because I was drawing this actual size, I certainly didn't want to get them too thick, but also the, the thinness of the steps, I think is part of the interest because it creates more, sh more cascades. It creates more of that, that bouncy um, water effect, which is so much the charm of this. And if you look, you can see how little I'm actually drawing with the water. I mean, I am having to simplify it. If I were using a pencil, then I could go for grayscale more easily, uh, especially on that left-hand side. But I need to make some choices because I am using pen. Now, the water doesn't extend to the entire rock ledge. And as I come further down, it's going to become a little less obvious where there's water and where there's just light reflecting off the rock but that's okay because as long as it's still looking as if this is a waterfall we don't exactly have to know what every part of it is is reading sometimes less is more and i do feel that the focus is on the center section anyway it's not actually on the closest part of this scene but i do want to capture the darker values lower down so here I am using the hatching direction, the direction of my hatching lines to represent the underlying form of these rock steps. So I'm in the lower half definitely of my scene, but I'm proceeding exactly the same way. Defining the water, albeit less of it, certainly less obvious water, as I move further down. Now, this, these cascades become quite wide as they come down. And so the bulk of the water, I think from memory, is actually coming down around the right-hand side of what we're looking at. So the main flow of water now is, is diverted off to the right.
However, to create just a little bit more interest down in the bottom, very bottom uh, ledge, that last ledge that we have, I decide to put a little more water flowing over that than we actually have in life, just to, to give a sense of continuity to the flow of water coming down. But I also decide to put it off to the side so it's not too, too obviously in the centre. So there's a bit of a dispersion effect. But otherwise, uh, the main thing really is the hatching because there is a lot more darkness I'm wanting to create here. And it can be a little bit difficult at times to see exactly what the rock surface is doing and therefore how to, uh, and therefore what direction to hatch my lines in. But basically, they're steps, basically they're drops. But now that there's a um, higher sections of rock to do, I, I do want to try and make it a little more uh, varied than just a, a straight downward step-like line. So I'm trying to represent a little more roundedness in the face of the rock. So I'm doing this and I'm just also wondering how much more will I do up the top for the, the trees, the foliage we have on each side because they do frame the actual waterfall. In some ways, probably pen is the most challenging medium to use to draw this. I think either pencil or marker would have given us more options or certainly more easier options to create the effect. But if I were doing this on location, I'm not sure I would be doing it much differently to how I'm doing it now. This took about 40, 45 minutes to do in real time. So it's still a relatively fast drawing for the amount of line work that there is. Once we have this method of or this understanding of drawing water by drawing the effect that, cre that it creates, the visual effect that it creates, particularly at its edges and in the values around it and through it and on it, and don't think of drawing water, particularly moving water of drawing the movement, then it becomes more straightforward. It may still be complex, particularly if there are a lot of reflections bouncing off the water or if it's broken up into lots of very small sections. But, but the process becomes much more straightforward. It's just a case of how much time do we want to put into it. So you can see me just creating those bits of water on each side down the bottom. As to be expected, probably the weakest part of the drawing since I made them up myself. My preference is to draw draw these things from a from a reference and now I'm just looking back over the the drawing as a whole and thinking where does it need a bit more work I add some tone to the oh, some hatching to create value on the clothing to make those figures stand out a little bit more looking at just adding a bit more form to that rock ledge there and again just putting a bit more darkness in areas where there is a bit more darkness in the reference. And now I'm looking at this foliage. I don't want to get too bogged down drawing lots of leaves because I really want the focus to be on the lines in the center of the water falling down, or at least the lines of the space around the water falling down the cascades. So I also take the shortcut of just a bit of generalized light hatching to indicate there's something happening there but we're not going to go into the detail of it. So I'm now really just doing that having a look stepping back having a look stepping back having a look doing a bit more adding a bit more thinking is it done can I stop and I think I'm pretty much done by this point. G'day, I'm Stephen Travis. Look, I hope you found this interesting. I hope, I hope in some ways it's demystified the process. There's still a lot of complexity to it, but it's just not that hard. It just takes a bit of time. I hope you have a go using this reference from my community page. But whatever you do, have fun.